We're here in the sunny southeast at the yard of Paul Nolan to catch up with him before latest exhibition runs at the Dublin Racing Festival. I just can't, I, I actually f***ing can't stand all this Love Island shit and all, you know? <laughs> and the wife, Catherine is big and I don't like sitting up in the kitchen on my own looking at it. So I go in, I went in last night to come home from the races and sat down with the firelight and, and she was looking at it. And I actually didn't think it was so, so bad. I, I, would you, is there any like it? Could you, can you watch it? Can you watch it? watch it? I don't, but Mark watched it. Oh, be the Jesus Christ, that man's fucking... When I see that big blonde bollocks and he's sitting up there and he had to say, uh, it, it, it's feelings, it's feelings for you, I'm still at home. <laughs> the place here in Tobernan, how, how did you end up here? It was a sheep farm. So my father would have gotten this from his father and then uh, I inherited it from him. When you were your younger, farming was maybe the plan as opposed oh, to... Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, farming was the plan until we just said there's not enough money to buy cornflakes out of this. Yeah. So went up to Jim Bulger's and came home from there and got a few horses to pint to pint and started off from there. I'd never been involved in horses before that. Never put a head collar on a horse, never went to a pint to pint. Interested looking at the races on the television and all, I loved it. But I never had that to do with a horse or nothing like that. So I remember I went over to Jim Myrna just to, to show me the basics, set me up on a horse and the horse that I actually sat up on was Deep Bramble, one of Jim's best horses. And went on to Bulger's then. With two pint to pinters and the two of them won, I took a license out then to train them. And it started then from two to sort of five to ten to twenty to forty to fit then just snowballed in a couple of years. Took us definitely a year to get our first winner. Mm. The first winner was actually a maiden hurdle in Leopardstown, a horse called Nibalda. He bet a horse of Dermot Wells called Musical Mayhem in a maiden hurdle, Joe Casey rode him. And that was the first winner we had. Was there was there a turning point or was there a big winner maybe in that those early days of the career where you kinda of went, Right, this is kind yeah, of for say, me now or, or or this is easy. I'd say I'd no, I'd say well it was never sort of easy. <laughs> But I'd say again, winning the Galway Hurdle was the first yeah. big winner we had. Yeah, and yeah. that sort of elevated it to, to a, a, good, a good level that we got an awful lot of owners and horses on the straight of that. Took you a few days and, to come home from Galway after as well. Did, did, we, we came home, we, <laughs> so it was a bottle of water beside the bed for a while after. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to kiss my spuds. No, good. <laughs> I wouldn't be going with my catching says now. Are you the chef? I am. Are you? Oh God, I, if, I, if I wasn't, I'd be a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> We've the Dublin Racing Festival just around the corner, and you've you've got a very exciting horse called Latest Exhibition. Yeah, you know he's 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 been very good. And, you know his bumpers worked out very well when he came out and he beat Andy Dufresne. Andy Dufresne came out and you know the far has been working out very well. And Andy, the horses that ran against one another, they go out every day and they run respectable again. So. Henry's horse looked very good the last day as well. Um, the Arakan horse, and, and, and there, seemed to, there, there seemed to be a nice bunch of novices. Uh, and as I said, I just hope that he stays in one piece and gets there healthy. Latest exhibition on the near side has just edged ahead of Andy Dufresne over the last. Latest exhibition on the near side and Brian Cooper just beginning to forge ahead from Andy Dufresne as they raced into the last hundred yards. And who saw this coming? Latest exhibition is driven out by Brian Cooper to beat Andy Dufresne who's lost his unbeaten run. Going to Cheltenham is that kind of... That is always high on the agenda for you. It is. It is the Olympics. There's no doubt. Everything seems to gauge around that. There's far better tracks and stuff like that. I mean, Leopardstown and a few of the tracks in Avon and Aces and all in Ireland would would far exceed the the the, the track in, in Cheltenham as regards fairness, fairness and yeah. everything like that. You need so much luck, and that and, and, and in fairness to Simon Clay and the fellas that look after Cheltenham, they, they, they have to look after what they have. Mm. But the undulations in it and all, you'd want to walk it to mm. appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I suppose it's the Irish English element as well. The bit of a challenge that you always like to beat them as well. And in the last few years, we've been far more competitive. That you know, not for seasons there, we were the Irish only had two or three winners. I think as a trainer now, you're going over and you're sort of more worried about yourself. It must be phenomenal pressure for for the likes of the lads that have so many runners. The more you have, the more pressure. But the more you have, the more chance you have a success as well. Do you know about this uh, stable staff bonus? No. Up for grabs? So apparently, if you Win the race. I was actually wondering what that was. The latest exhibition is yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, it's on the. I, I was wondering what it was. You go and you go on to Cheltenham and win a race. Right. 50 grand? Oh, Jesus Christ. 
I'll beat them mother. He's, he's just farted there, I think it'd be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Heard the mic. 